session, let us do an experiment to find out the resistance and resistivity of a given wire. We will make use of the potentiometer circuit for this purpose. Measurement of resistance and resistivity. So, to aim is to find the resistance of a given coil of wire using potentiometer and hence to calculate the resistivity of the material of the wire. This is the experimental setup and we will try to understand the circuit part by part. This is the primary circuit. It consists of a battery, a rheostat and a key and this is the 10 meter long potentiometer wire represented in the diagram. So this is a primary circuit. Here when we connect a battery, a current will flow through the circuit. The purpose of this rheostat is just to adjust the current that is flowing. This is the primary circuit, battery, rheostat, key and the 10 meter long potentiometer wire. These are the two ends of this potentiometer. So coming to the circuit once again, this is a primary, this is the secondary circuit. It again consists of two cells, a rheostat, a known standard resistance R and an unknown resistance wire X. Now this primary circuit and the secondary circuit is connected together with the help of a six-way key that is given here. Circuit, it consists of two cell, an unknown resistance wire which I have fixed on a wooden platform, then a known resistance, here I have taken one ohm resistance, a known standard resistance, a rheostat and a key. So this forms the secondary circuit. This battery will make a current flow through the circuit and rheostat will help you to adjust, it, adjust the resistance in the circuit and thereby adjust the current flowing through the circuit. So coming to the theory of the circuit, when a current flows through a wire, let AB be our experimental wire, then potential drop across the wire is proportional to the length of the wire. V is proportional to L. This is the basic principle of potentiometer. Now, if we want to measure an unknown voltage, V, Using this potentiometer arrangement, what we have to do is adjust this jockey point G so that we get null deflection in this galvanometer. Under this condition, we can say that this unknown voltage V is proportional to the length AJ, the balancing length. So, in order to find out the potential drop across a definite length of the potentiometer wire, the basic principle would be potential drop per unit length of the wire into the balancing length of the wire, in this case it is AG. With this principle of potentiometer, we can find out the unknown resistance X. Now coming to the circuit once again, we will do the primary circuit, do the secondary circuit and connect the primary and secondary through the six way key. First, we will try to find out what is the 
potential drop across this unknown resistance x so this is a unknown potential drop that we are applying to our primary circuit for that we will introduce key at the point here and here so that this potential will be applied as an unknown potential to this primary circuit as we discussed here this is unknown voltage and here it is this voltage drop across x that acts as an unknown volt unknown voltage so introducing this voltage to the primary we will find out the balancing length l1 of the unknown resistance i call it as l1 now in the next stage we will apply the voltage across this known standard resistance r into this primary circuit for that we will take off the key from these points and introduce it here these two points we will introduce it so that the potential difference across r is a unknown voltage in this case we will call the balancing length at this point as l2 as mentioned here l1 is a balancing length of no unknown resistance l2 is a balancing length of known standard resistance so that the unknown resistance x can be calculated as r into l1 by l2 where r is the standard resistance which we have introduced in the circuit so this is a primary circuit this is a secondary circuit now we will connect both this together with the help of this six way key now we will connect the secondary unknown resistance with an additional two wires taken from here on to this point then two connections from the known standard resistance like this and the central point of this six way key to this galvanometer and then the jock so this is the primary i'll close the primary circuit this is a secondary i will close the secondary circuit you have to close the primary and secondary only after you complete your circuit please make a point on that or else the battery will drain out all the while when the circuit is complete part by part Then another thing to be noted is here I have used one cell for the primary and two cell for the secondary. So this unknown resistance is connected to these points. No resistance to additional wire connected to these points. And the central point of the six way key is from point A of the potentiometer through the galvanometer. and to this jock so the circuit is done now we will introduce this unknown resistance or the potential drop across this unknown resistance into our primary by this procedure so this potential drop is included into this primary circuit as the unknown voltage now we will find out the balancing length l1 so let us observe this galvanometer first you have to check check if you are getting opposite deflection that is the first length of the wire you are getting a deflection to this side and the last wire you should get a deflection to the opposite wire 
then only there is chance of getting a balancing point between the first point and the last wire. So we will check it in this manner to the left, 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 to the right. So the balancing will be in between these two points. So let us find out where the balancing point is. Okay, hope you can see it. Now the needle is at zero. So we will find out what is the balancing length. So first wire 100 centimeter, second 200, third 300. 300 is complete over there and three, sorry, 300 is complete over there. So you have to take the scale from that end. So the length would be 339. 100, 200, 339 from that end. So this will be 339 is my balancing point. And the galvanometer is showing zero deflection. So balancing length for the unknown resistance x now we will find the balancing length for the known standard resistance that is r for that take the connection point from there and connect it here so that the standard resistance potential is included here to the primary as the voltage that is to be measured so again First check if the connections are correct. To the left galvanometer goes, to the right the galvanometer goes. The first length and the second last point. Now check to the left, to the right. So that means the balancing point is between these two points. So just find out by moving this jockey. It's coming towards the center. Yes, it is balanced. It's perfectly balanced. So we'll find out using the scale reading. So 100 ends there. From there we have come. So we'll take this scale starting from the other end. So it is 146. 146 is the balancing length. We have got it. So, we got two balancing length. One L1 for the unknown resistance and L2 for the known resistance. So, this is the main part of the experiment. Now, we need to repeat it to get a confirmation. So, now we will repeat the experiment by varying the current in the second row. See to it that you don't change the primary rheostat. Let it remain at the same position. Change the position of the secondary rheostat so that current in the secondary circuit is varied and hence the potential drop across the unknown resistance as well as the potential drop across the standard resistance will vary correspondingly. So we have changed the current in the secondary by varying the rheostat. Now we will include the six-way key here and measure the drop across this using the primary potentiometer circuit as we have already discussed. So here you will get another length L1 by finding out the balancing point. Now we will find out the potential drop across the standard resistance by including that resistance into the potential 
measurement of this potentiometer wire, find out the balancing point and note it as L2. You can again repeat this experiment by changing the current of the secondary, by changing the position of the rheostat slightly and then finding out your L1 then your L2 so this procedure can be repeated for more values of current in the secondary see to it that you don't change the current in the primary that is you don't touch the rheostat in the primary Write down the standard resistance which we have included here. In our case, it was 1 ohm resistance. Balancing length L1 for unknown resistance X. Balancing length L2 for standard resistance R. Find out the unknown resistance. Now, we have got one more aim. That is to find out the resistivity of this unknown resistance wire. So, to calculate the resistivity, you need to take the radius of this wire. So, using a screw gauge, you can take measurements of diameter and note it down in the tabular column. Please see to it that you check for the zero error zero correction of the screw gauge then calculate the mean radius or mean diameter of this unknown resistance wire so with this we can go to the theory of the measurement of resistivity of the wire we know that resistance is proportional to length of the wire and inversely proportional to area of cross section of the wire. So, if you change the proportionality sign, you can put the constant of proportionality that is rho. Rho into L by A. Rearranging the equation, resistivity rho is equal to resistance into A by L. That is equal to resistance X into area of cross section pi r square by length of the wire L. So make it a point to take the measurement of length L here. This is the length L. The point here to point here, whatever is the length of this wire, measure it by releasing the wire or and keeping it over a scale. So So by measuring the length and radius of the wire, we can calculate resistivity of the material of this. We can calculate the resistivity of the wire x pi r square by L. So through this experiment, we have calculated the resistance of an unknown wire as well as resistivity of the material of the wire. Hope you have understood this experiment. Thank you.